My name's Aaron Massey from MrFixItDIY.com and today I'm gonna to show you how I took this old pile of wheelbarrow parts rusting away in my backyard and restored it to a fully functional wheelbarrow that's as good as new. This video is brought to you by WD-40. Above and beyond the legendary signature blue and yellow can, the WD-40 company has a full range of high performance products for maintenance, repair, and cleaning in industrial applications for all manner of enthusiasts, professionals, DIYers, and homeowners. To see the full range of their products and where you can buy them, visit their website at WD-40.com. When I moved into this house, I found these old wheelbarrow parts rusting away in the backyard, and rather than tossing it in the dumpster, I knew I wanted to restore it somewhere down the line. So I've been holding on to them for a few years until I could get around to it. Most of the wheelbarrow parts are actually in pretty good shape, with the majority just being surface rust. Sure, I could just go buy a new wheelbarrow if I wanted to, but where's the fun in that? Before I could do much with this wheelbarrow, I had to start by taking off all the surface rust, which was a pretty big task in and of itself. I started by soaking all the smaller components in industrial cleaner and degreaser and used some rust release spray to loosen up the old rusted bolts on some of the hardware. I had to do a little extra persuading with the old parts to get them apart, but once they were all apart, I could let them soak for a little while. Then I could focus on the tub itself. Now this would have been a great task for a sandblaster, but since I don't have one, I used a flap disc on my angle grinder for the majority of the removal. I also used some low grit sandpaper on my orbital sander and a wire brush attachment on my drill. And I'm not gonna lie, it took me a pretty long time to get down to the bare metal on the whole tub. And then once I removed all the rust from the tub, I had to do the exact same thing on all the smaller hardware components, which ended up being not so bad. Finally, after a whole bunch of sanding and grinding, I had all the pieces brought back down to the bare metal for the most part and ready for primer. I sprayed the whole thing with a few coats of Rust-Oleum Rust Sealing Metal Primer with my Graco paint sprayer. Originally, this wheelbarrow was blue, which I didn't know until I started sanding it down, but since I'm redoing it, I decided to make it a little more on brand for Mr. Fix-It this time around, and I painted the tub a bright orange. I couldn't find the orange color in a can to use with my sprayer, so I had to go with the old trusty rattle can method. For the other hardware components, I decided to make those all black, so I sprayed them with a few coats as well, and then sealed the whole thing with a few coats of high gloss clear coat. While all that set up, I started in on the new handles and wedges for the wheelbarrow. I started by milling down some hard maple that I had lying around into long rectangles for the handles. Normally I probably wouldn't use maple for this because it's a pretty nice hardwood for a wheelbarrow that's gonna get some abuse outside, but I wasn't about to go buy something else. And yes, I could have bought pre-made handles as well, but again, where's the fun in that? It'll just be the nicest handled wheelbarrow around when it's all done. When it came time to shape the handles, I wasn't really sure how I was gonna do it, but I decided to try and just use the angle grinder and the flap disc since I used it for just about everything else, and it worked out great. I was able to rough shape them into something that was pretty ergonomic and then finish them off with some sandpaper. Then I started to figure out where the hardware was gonna line up in the handles and started to drill holes in them. Since I didn't have any parts to base the wedges off of, I didn't really know what the angle needed to be or how long they needed to be, so I rough assembled the wheelbarrow to try and get a sense of how it was gonna be so I could figure out how to make them and also where the wheel was gonna fall. The old wheel was pretty dry rot, so I did end up spending some money on a new one and decided to go with a solid rubber tire. I also bought new galvanized nuts and bolts to hopefully stop the rust from happening again down the line. In hindsight, I should have done all this before I painted everything, just so I wouldn't beat up on the paint job so much from wrenching on it and moving it around. But if it can't hold up to being taken apart and put back together a bunch of times, then it won't hold up to much abuse anyway. Once I had an idea of what to do for the wedges, I cut them on the table saw and then used the drill press to mortise out some holes so that I could have an area to adjust them if I needed to, which ended up working out pretty good. Before I did the final reassembly of everything, I wiped down all the maple with a couple coats of tongue oil finish to help it withstand the outdoor elements. I'll have to reapply this down the line, but for now, a couple coats should be fine. I'm pretty sure there was an easier way to get this thing back together than the way I actually did it, but after a bunch of messing around, I finally got it put back together and tightened down. So without further ado, here is the finished wheelbarrow. I 
I added one last thing to this wheelbarrow, and that is this wheelbarrow liner to try and keep the paint job on the inside of the tub intact for a little while, and hopefully protect it. These are manufactured by a local company, and one was sent over to me to test out, so I figured I'd give it a shot and see how it works out. Well, that's it for this project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I had a ton of fun bringing this old wheelbarrow back to life. It's not something that I do very often, so it was a fun little restoration challenge for me, and I'd definitely like to do some more of this down the line. I want to say a quick thank you to WD-40 for making this video possible, and I encourage you guys to check out some of their new line of products for your DIY and home improvement projects. If you want more information about this or any of my other DIY projects, check out my website at mrfixitdiy.com, or just click the link in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.